on the Champs-Élysées in Paris, the biggest night of the year. From across the world, international celebrities come to celebrate a seasonal rite, led by Brigitte Bardot, the sex kitten of the 50s and 60s and 70s, in a dark world. <laughs> Film star Alan Delon, prima ballerina Ludmilla Cirina, the Duchess of Windsor, escorted by Maurice Chevalier, and a thousand others arriving eager and expectant to admire the creation of this determined little figure. When you think of international showbiz, of galas, theatrical occasions and worldwide fame, the name Margaret Kelly doesn't immediately leap to mind. Yet in that glittering world of razzmatazz and fantasy, there are few who've dazzled more audiences. For Miss Kelly, born in Dublin, abandoned by her parents, adopted by a Liverpool family, grew from that frail, deserted waif to become the iron hand behind the velvet gowns of thousands of girls who've been widening the world's eyes since 1934. She's Miss Bluebell. Bluebell! fuss and feathers means that after seven weeks of rehearsal it's gala night at the leader the bluebells are at it again most of them are english and they're not well known at home but abroad they're an institution all that's best from britain Bluebell came from an Irish doctor. Um, a doctor in Dublin was called to see me when I was um, very tiny. And he said to my mother, what's her name? She said, Margaret Kelly. And he said, if she was my daughter, I'd call her Bluebell with those eyes. She was a, a rather an eccentric Irish woman too. And so she decided that she'd call me Bluebell. And that's how it all happened. At 21, she was in Paris and captain of 28 dancers at the Folie Bergère when... They didn't know what to, or couldn't decide at least, what to call the girls. So um, uh, somebody said, why don't we call them the Bluebell Girls? It's a pretty name. And that was the way it all happened. Now this was what year? This was in um, uh, December 34. How many girls do you think have, have passed through your hands in all this time? Well, looking back, um, and I would say that there are about at least 6,000. 6,000? 6, yes. All right, stop now. Okay, hold it. Bluebell led the Folie Berger dancers until one day, late for rehearsal before Miss Tanguette, she was sacked. So at 22, she formed her own troupe, and today, 36 years and thousands of girls later, there's still no doubt who's running the show. Just where you're coming forward, this group here. Ready? Five, six, seven, on. This is Bluebell's whole life. Nearing 60, her vitality is remarkable. Tireless, watching the action like a hawk, she takes her girls through weeks of rehearsal and, when not travelling the world, checking up on far-flung troops, she's always here at the Lido until 4 a.m., putting things right. Oh, be careful! Right. Ball. Hold. Right, now there's where you Seems very hard work this time. Yeah. I think it is very hard work. Very hard work to do this. But do, do girls sometimes leave because it's too hard, because they don't want to do this sort of grinding work? No, never because it's too hard work. Because, I don't know, you're rewarded if you work hard at rehearsals and you work hard on the show at night, you don't have any more rehearsals. You know. what, what do you find is the best thing about the job, if you like most? I think the people. You meet such a lot of people. Men? No, not, specific, not specifically men. Mm. Everybody. You meet, like, I suppose I met you. <laughs> you meet everybody. Yeah. Yeah, all types. All types, yeah. <laughs> yes, but, but you don't have stage door Johnnies anymore, do you? No. So how no. do you come to meet men, then? Oh, I don't know. You, you just meet them. You meet them in the coffee bars and restaurants. You meet them through other girls. Do you mean they mark you out and they say, number three, you know, and I'll find her afterwards? No, occasionally you get notes sent through your telephone calls, but mm. um, you don't get anybody waiting at the stage door for you to try and pick you up. You don't. Yeah. It's disappointing, isn't it? But what about Miss Bluebell? Does she, is she concerned about this, about your boyfriends, or doesn't she bother? She doesn't like you going out with people in the show, which is fair enough, really, because if you've got violent romances going on inside the Lido, it upsets everybody's routine. What about violent romances outside the show? As long as you don't let it affect your work. She's, you know, she doesn't mind. She doesn't mind anything as long as your work isn't affected. As long as it doesn't frighten the horses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
did something wrong there, right at the back there. You know, all these things that were so cute when you do it are there. But whenever you do any of these kind of things, you really have to come really across your eyes and look at them. She has a beautiful look when she's looking at them, Pat. That's really very important. You do have too, but you turn your head away half the time. You know, you, you do it here, and you really have to have it that you're really looking. And look under your eyes at them, because it's so important that. The Bluebells give two shows a night before a thousand people. And since this club operates seven days a week, can earn from 30 to 50 pounds. But their stage life is short. At 25, there has been. Bluebells come in three interesting varieties. These dancers, the mannequin who just parade around undressed to kill, and the dancing mannequin who are bluebell girls with breasts. At Las Vegas and Madrid and Buenos Aires in night spots around the world, there are 80 bluebells, all of them on the same old grind. Though she teaches them how to be sexy and publicly provocative, Miss Bluebell's often supplied with this nubile talent by parents. Well, they were very pleased that I was going away to join the Bluebells. They thought it was marvellous. Please? Yes, they were pleased. But I didn't tell them I was going to be a mannequin, therefore I didn't tell them I was going to be topless. So I went to Portugal on tour, and one night at work I got a telegram saying we were arriving in Lisbon on Saturday. So I panicked a bit. Um, but it was going to be all right, as far as I thought, because as long as they came to see the first show and not the second show, I was wearing a bra. In the first show? In the first show, I wore a bra, uh -huh. which was great, as far as I was concerned. Mm. Um, anyway, they said one night, we're coming to see the second show tonight, so I panicked and just said, please don't come, please don't come. So she said, why, is there a reason? So I said, yes, but I'm, I just can't tell you. So she said, are you topless? So I burst into floods of tears and said yes. And she said, oh, you silly girl, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. As long as you don't mind doing it, we don't mind you doing it. You know, there's far much, much worse things being seen in the streets of London today. Yes, topless is uh, pretty ordinary these days, isn't it? I suppose it is. It wasn't to me the first night, I can assure you. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Had a bit stiff whiskey. <laughs> and what was the audience like? Men are men. I don't know, I had the feeling of women being, mm, look at her, mm, she's not very nice in all this business, but I don't think they were really, it's just because I was so nervous. But um, I got over that. You, get, you do get over it, and I, it gives you a lot of confidence. How long did it take you to find being topless normal? Um, about a week. How long? About a week. Mm. You, you get over it, really, it's just, it's just something you do. And now it doesn't worry me in the slightest. Not in the slightest. The only thing that does worry is backstage all the stage hands eyeing me up, but you know, that's natural I suppose. Well, just for myself personally, I just I couldn't be I just wouldn't be topless. Not for appearance or anything like that, just for myself, how I feel about it. Yes. How do I be done? No, I wouldn't either. Would you not? No, no. Is it because you'd be shy or because you think it's I don't think there's any reason for it. When you get topless, it takes something away. I think it's much more sexy looking when you've got just a, a costume on, a very nice costume, you know, high at the legs and things like that. I don't see anything topless at all. Some of the Bluebird girls said they wouldn't appear topless. Now, this is really cheating, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is, rather, but it still isn't topless, and I agree with them. <laughs> but you see, it's remarkable to me that some of the things these girls wear, that, not, that they can wear them, that's remarkable, but they can wear them and dance in them, that's even more staggering. Well, that's the secret of the whole thing, I think, and that's what, uh, when the girls join, they have quite a lot of difficulty in that, because one is not used to dancing with a ton of feathers on your head and knowing how to, knowing how to move feathers, you know, yes. it's, it's uh, quite an art in its own. And some of these headdresses, yes. um, the, A, I don't know if they are heavy, are they heavy? Yes, very heavy. Are they? That's a chorus that agrees. <laughs> <laughs> and then it seems they have to sort of drive them, really, because yeah. they, they're not part of them. They're too enormous to be part of that's them. That's true. They have to but steer you, them. You have to get used to it. That's um, the way. It's very hard when you first start. Yes. And the, when you begin, you nearly lose all your hair trying to put them, keep it on. You know? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> In or out of costume, Bluebell girls do stand out. Often strapping 16-year-olds grown too tall for ballet who make you feel you're standing in a hole. The boss is somewhat smaller. I was always a strong-looking girl, although I started 
through being delicate, but after about um, six months I became very strong and healthy type, and there used to be all these little dainty little dolls working, and it used to infuriate me, because even my own mother used to say to me, I wish you were nice and cute like she is, you know, and I was always this kind of a person, and I think that that stayed with me. And I think that I used to think to myself, now how is it that a big girl can't be just as graceful and just as good a dancer as a little, cute little girl, you know? I think that really started the whole thing. What do you look for then in the girls you recruit? Well, I, I look for um, not always a beauty. I find that girls that have um, a certain uh, type of faces that one can make up and one can change. I also look for people that have slim ankles and slim arms and a feminine way about them. That's the most important thing as far as I'm concerned. I think that bluebell girls, when they're on stage and they are dressed with the way we dress them always, they do look beautiful and they've got to look beautiful. But um, it isn't the real beauty that one would see, um, you know, strictly for modelling or that kind of thing. No, it isn't. I mean, some of them are quite plain, actually. Yes. But when you see them on the stage, you wouldn't recognise them. You sort of brainwash them into, into believing that they're beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you yes. do that? Well, I say to them uh, when I'm um, rehearsing them that um, they must think that they are the prettiest girl on the floor and they must make themselves look as if they are. And I think that that helps. It gives it good for their ego. And uh, they, um, they get the idea, too, that that's... Uh, what I always say is they came into a glamorous profession, so they've got to keep uh, like that. And what's this about not worrying so much what they look like? You say it can be changed. How can it be changed? If I find a girl has um, a nose that's too heavy for theatre or something, I advise her or her parents to have a plastic surgery. Oh, um, sometimes they accept it and sometimes they don't. Um, I think that it's very essential that one has uh, features that are good for um, for theatre in what we're doing. If you're going to be a comedian or something, it doesn't make any difference. But uh, in the um, business that we're in, we have to have good-looking um, people. She likes them, from the, you know, so she can work on them the way she wants them, not to be somebody. Already, it's all sophisticated and all. Yeah, properly. You know, she likes so she can mold it into her own. Mm. My parents could never pick me out on a program. They say, is that you? No, is that you? Mm. No. You know, I was winking and shouting and <sighs> waving hands and everything. You still didn't see me, you know? So you're true what you said about everybody being on mass. You can't, so you couldn't pick us out as own daughter, yeah. you know? Now, how do you feel about being moulded? Do you like to be moulded? Yeah, because I get moulded for five hours. No, five hours. I only work five hours. And afterwards, we can all yeah, be we individuals and we're just today. ourselves. We're very normal. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Now go. One, These girls are going all right, all the way to Africa for the opening of the Nairobi Casino. The average bluebell's 19, the youngest, about 15. The under-18s go abroad by special license, and Miss Bluebell's responsible for them. So after the show, around 4 a.m., it's straight up to one of the eight studio apartments above the Lido. Not even Bluebell's favourites are free to follow their fancies around Paris or Nairobi, where this new troupe of nine girls will live under command of their captain from Bournemouth. You're the captain. You've got, what, nine, eight girls? Lovely girls. Eight no, adorable girls to look at. <laughs> 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 no, I haven't. I do. I think you're lovely. But you're taking them into an unknown land, as it were. This ought to be a worry to you, I would have thought. Well, there is a telephone. I can telephone people yes. and I can uh, get a flight back for the girls. What sort of discipline have you got? Well, I think that I have to be one step ahead of them and see what they're up to. You mean wild girls? <laughs> wild girls, yeah. Have you got any punishments? Are you going to no. find them? Well, what punishment can I give them? I don't know. I mean, well, you I can send them to the theatre to sell all afternoon. Oh. <laughs> the captain has to know who she can trust. And it's really up to the girl to behave. She should know. If she's old enough, she should know how to behave. And therefore, it's no problem for the captain. But of course, naturally, you get one or two. You just can't help those things. And then the discipline has to be much harder for that girl. So what sort of discipline was there in Mexico, for example, when you were there? Well, I wasn't under license. But the, the some that were, if they did anything wrong, they were sent straight back to the hotel after the show and the captain would make sure that she was there. And quite often the captain would have to stay in the hotel to make sure she didn't go mm. out. Yes, but then they'd creep out the windows on the sheets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> no, you know this yourself. Yeah.
<laughs> they creep out of the rooms down the shoes. Well, why not? <laughs> and you set about protecting um, 80 girls from uh, fates worse than death. Well, one of the girls, for example, she came to me about two weeks ago and she said, Miss Blue Brother's a man annoying me in the arcade at night time. He's been there two nights, so I said, well, um, I'll come up with you tonight. And so she, she said, and he's terribly old. I said, how old is he? She said, well, he must be 35. I said, my God, how old? <laughs> but I went up with her, and the, poor, the man had disappeared. I didn't um, see him, and she'd never seen him after. But that kind of thing. But the other thing is that, from your point of view, as long as a girl, if she's over 18, yes. if she's there an yes. hour before the show, yes. that's all you expect. And she performs well, yes. Um, that, uh, you see, I have to be very careful too, because um, if anybody gets into any problems, like say, for example, it did happen, but it hasn't, but say anybody was taking drugs or that kind of thing, all the papers come out and say, Bluebell girl, um, so and so and so and so. One has to be careful, and then it makes the, the other, the parents would be very worried about letting them, uh, not that they, if they wanted to, they would do it anywhere, you know? There's a story, for example, that, um, that Bluebell girls mustn't talk to the customer. Is this true? Sure. Yeah, it's absolutely bunny. forbidden for any of the bluebirds to go into any of the um, uh, theatres or front of the house uh, that we're working in. And the reason for that is that, um, uh, uh, well, this goes back many years. I'm sure that you must have heard that um, a lot of these uh, dancing girls go out to various countries and they, re they do a couple of... Um, numbers and then they have to go and be hostesses in front of the house. Now that is a thing that I have never ever permitted to happen. Now you, you strike me, uh, Bluebell, as being pretty strict actually. You seem quite tough. Really. Yes, I believe I am too. Now do you, are they frightened of you, do you think? Um, in one way, I think, yes, I have to be strict with them. Well, it, football teams, they're strict when they're travelling, or cricket teams, they're um, strict. If you have any big group of people, you have to be strict with them. At times, you feel you'd like to get out and meet people and go out, but, um, you know, you just can't yes, accept it. You just have to accept it. It's your job, and you've got to stick it's to it. You don't really, because I think a lot of young people nowadays are allowed a lot of freedom. Yeah. Well, I, my parents trusted me because, you know, I just went out and enjoyed myself and had fun. I had boyfriends and they really trusted me. And I used to go out a lot, and now I miss it a lot because I can't go out. Nobody would think that you became a bluebird girl and your life became more constructive. Yeah, no, they yeah. think you're having it's a true. terrific time. I mean. No, I know it's a shame in a way, but I've only got another year to wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, where, where do ex bluebird girls go? What happens to you? You're going to marry a millionaire. Yeah, there's not got... many left. No. Well, there must be some. They're coming well, I can't up. find wow. them. <laughs> well, we met. Um, Michael Batty, who he's uh, <laughs> more or less a millionaire, and he, oh, gosh, every trip that goes to um, Singapore and Bangkok, he takes out. The whole trip? Yeah, yeah he takes the whole it's trip fabulous. out. It's got a beautiful Thai house. Thai house in Thailand where we go and have meals and swim in the pool at night time. It's lovely. Champagne in the swimming pool. <laughs> Really? No, it's really... But did he have any favourites? That, that sounds even more useful. Well, actually, yes. yes. <laughs> and what happened to you? It sort of fizzled out in the end. Oh. <laughs> I went down the stairs once for 20 francs. What I don't understand is, if, if the Bluebells are so famous, why is it the only country in the world that isn't interested in Bluebells is England, where you all come from? Because you won't pay us enough money. True. No, but obviously if we cared about you, we'd pay you. You can get troops that you've got in England who'll only work for under half of what we, we want to be paid. As long as they know what they're doing, because yesterday she put my right foot on my left and my left foot on my right, you know, and I had to go on. And Listen, even your makeup is old fashioned. You all look the same. You have this makeup plastered on. No. You wear costumes that, that emphasize the erogenous zones without exposing them. And this was the idea of sex about 20 years ago. Sex yeah. is always sex. It's Everything been changing sex. sex. No, no. It's, it's an erotic thing, but it's all changed. It's passed you by. It's left you behind. What's passed? It's like come dancing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's old-fashioned. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I disagree with you. Because I think you had the wrong idea because girls, uh, many girls don't want to go on stage and show everything they have. You want to go on, sh uh, go on stage in a bikini, a, a well-cut bikini or a, a nice uh, ensemble. I don't want to go on stage showing everything. On stage, sex symbols not quite showing everything. Backstage, just jolly British girls. 
They're huge. But don't you just Their shows cost £200,000 to stage, but will run unchanged for a couple of years and be seen by more than a million people buying champagne at £8 a bottle. Tourists come in season amid a flurry of traveller's checks alongside a steady supply of French, about whom these new Paris residents have definite opinion. You don't like them? No, I don't. They're very good. I don't like you. This is only Parisians, though. I think the French, the actual mm. French countryside people. They're very nice. I think they're different, but the they're Parisians are a race in their own. They would push you down as soon as look at you. Mm. It's a race. They're not, it's very strange. Don't like them. They sit back and wait to be entertained, really. I suppose that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They want everything on they a plate. They everything, yes. They paid their money, they're sitting there. Yeah. So, they look so aloof. You know, <laughs> they sit with their nose up and they're all dressed up in fox fur and they're all sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but can you see all the audience? Yeah, you can yeah, see them through the yeah. Chinese masks. Since their tongues out of the Yeah, in the summertime you get the Americans. Yeah. You see Americans. And they, the, you know, fantastic. the Americans. Fantastic. The Japanese. Nice. Terrible. And Chinese. The same. They don't applaud. Mm -hmm. Not much. They, they might as well sit on their just let themselves go. And also they have a few drinks, they have a couple of beers and they're drunk, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. they fall over like dormices onto the table. Yeah. They fall asleep. Very strange. And there you are, doing your. No. Yeah. <laughs> we do. We we used to do a Charleston number, didn't we, over yeah. in Japan? Like we want to be loved by you, and nobody else will do. And we're singing this to this Japanese Chinese guy in the audience, and he's just sitting, sitting there. there, you know. <laughs> or his wife would walk out or cover her face. Oh up. yes, the women used Things to be like very that. jealous. Mm. It was so oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Now, do you play to somebody? Do you keep looking at somebody? Uh, yeah, usually got a shy man in the front. Yeah. Yeah. We all play to the same man. So he smiles at there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You feel so nasty. <laughs> we just give a wee smile. <laughs> oh, you can pick. Yeah. You can pick a shy man out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Easily. So Easily. So it looks. His wife's sitting behind him. Sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the ones who aren't shy? Oh, they always blow kisses to you. And oh, yeah. the, the, and it's quite often I've seen yeah. somebody trying to get, get a fan of the, the, up and Yeah, get a fan from the fairies. glasses and of things. champagne and things like that. What, the bite of the banana when you give them some chai? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of the audience are very good and if they laugh, you enjoy yeah, it better. Yeah, and you get a super atmosphere. Their costumes, believe it or not, can cost 400 pounds each. They must uncover what's bearable while resisting unfair wear and tear. So don't forget it, says Bluebell, with motherly menace, on watch as usual, making sure her bells are ringing for that expectant gala lights. With almost half a century of opening nights behind her, she's a calm sergeant major on this turbulent parade ground. It's not very nice. Amazing. It's Shows in clubs like this and girls like Bluebells were once the heart of the naughty ooh-la-la mystique of Paris and they've hardly changed since the 20s when a bare breast was a sensation to a visiting Anglo-Saxon. Today, Bluebell's costumes, makeup, routines have an endearing, nostalgic quality like an old Hollywood musical. But to audiences, Paris, the catalyst, still makes them seem wonderful. With fixed smiles and feathers, they come flaunting out of our memories just the way they did for death. Which can't be bad for, let's face it, females are always in fashion. Thank you. 